Hello friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where we appreciate the form in Transformers. Today, I'm unexpectedly taking a look at Robots in Disguise Megatronus, the Toys R Us version specifically, which will make more of a difference in robot mode. I was visiting my parents over the weekend a couple of weeks ago, and stopped by a local toy shop that I go to sometimes while I'm there called the Toy Vault. If you're ever in Connecticut, Definitely worth checking out because they actually sell like used toys and stuff like that. So you can get some uh, Transformers and other figures for a pretty reasonable price, I'd say. Not like a sponsored thing or anything. I'm just saying if you happen to be there, look them up because they're cool. But anyway, I was wandering through the store and actually found a bunch of different figures used that were ones that I wanted to get. <laughs> and one of them is Megatronus here. And yeah, so I have Megatronus now, and this is a very fun figure. I actually really, really like this guy, despite his simplicity and being in the R.I.D. line, which is very simple. Like, that's kind of the whole thing, because, you know, it's the it's the much more kid-oriented line, like even more kid-oriented than the regular Hasbro lines. And this is the warrior class figure, the one that's, I guess, what you could call closest to not being ridiculously dumbed down but still simple. And as I said, I really, really like this figure. Uh, Megatronus is, I guess this qualifies as an H tank, maybe. I don't know, I don't really care that much, but it's pretty cool. I feel like it could definitely do with some more detail in this mode, like overall, I think the color scheme works. It's just, you've got this big block of gray, big block of darker gray, big block of gray. And then the treads are mostly just dark gray with like, a little bit of light there and then some paint there. It could definitely do with some more detail. I do actually have stickers on the way, so that'll happen eventually, but for now, just the base figure. Tank mode could definitely do with a little bit more. I mean, what's here does work. I like that they put this sort of metallic-y purple on the tip of the barrel there to kind of make that stand out, and there is some detail underneath the barrel, which has like a light blue Tron-like light effect. I think that's what they're going for. Oh, and here you've got missile pods that have been painted in purple, which is nice, but I kind of want to go in there and give each one a little dollop of silver to make it stand out a bit more. So I will likely be customizing this guy with uh, some paint in addition to the stickers that I inevitably get. It's cool, though. I mean, I like the shape of the barrel. I think it's like a cool kind of squarish, futuristic blaster type look. It's vaguely reminiscent of Shockwave, actually, in that regard, just in the fact that it's like a square-shaped cannon. And I think that looks cool. It's just, again, the color is very simplistic, though that purple is very much appreciated. Another thing that's kind of interesting about this, to me at least, is the fact that when you look at it from the side, considering like how the treads are shaped and how far the barrel kind of sticks forward, it almost looks like the entire tank is kind of leaning forward a bit and like perpetually going really fast <laughs> like cartoon style it's simple for what it is but it gets the job done i just wish that there was more detailing on here which again is one of the reasons why i got those stickers and is why i want to go in here and do some painting once i get everything together as well because it could totally do with some of that and then you've got the sword spear bayonet thing sticking off the front which normally i don't do accessories you all know this probably the reason i keep this around though is because i actually think it looks better with it on and i think megatronus looks better with this in his robot mode but there you can see without the uh spike sticking off of it and it's still cool it's just i don't know maybe it's the color difference the fact that this adds just a little bit more to the uh to the front there but i think it looks better with the spear sticking off of it the only other thing that really kind of disappoints me with this is I get this transformation is simple. I totally get that. But what's going on with the torso here, because yeah, this is the robot mode torso. I just wish they had done something else with this to kind of cover some things up in vehicle mode. Like you've got these enormous screw holes back here, which aren't even actually screw holes. If you look in there, they're just holes. <laughs> they are just holes. There are no screws in there. That's actually where the ball joint connects for the uh, shoulders there. So I don't know why those enormous holes had to be in the back there. And I'm also somewhat disappointed with the fact that this is open up top here. So you've just got robot heads sticking out. 
that could have been covered up, I feel. And it's also weird that there are these gaps in the uh, what becomes the collar of the robot mode that it looks like something's supposed to slide or clip in there, but there's nothing. It's just, there's nothing there. All I can figure is maybe they cut that out to like save on plastic maybe, but it's so little that it doesn't really seem necessary and it just makes it seem like something's supposed to go there. I don't know. There are some things about this that are just weird to me. Still, overall, I do very much like this figure. And one of the main things I like about it is the fact that the engineering is actually a lot of fun. I genuinely like how this thing transforms. Despite being simple, it just works really, really well. All right, so that is just about going to do it for Megatronus' tank mode. But first, we got to do some size comparisons. So there he is with a Power of the Prime Slux. And, you know, he's a warrior class RID figure, so he's roughly the size of a Deluxe. Shouldn't really be any surprises there. Not really. And you know what? I'm making the decision. I am actually going to walk through the transformation rather than speed it up. Just this one time, because I want to go over why I like this transformation so much. So, starting with the legs, it's going to hinge this forward, and then this bit folds around, and then it's a disconnects from here and folds down and that makes a leg and I actually really like that transformation it works really effectively and you can see here how this totally works as tank treads but like as soon as you fold it around and close that up that makes a really convincing uh, <laughs> shin it's it's simple but really effective I really like that and there you've got the lower body and then Turn that around, split this, then I do two clicks on the shoulders to bring those in, Turn that around, flip up the head, and when you close this, that pegs in there and locks the head in place, which is again a simple, simple thing, but actually very effective. I like it. I like simple and effective tricks. And flip out the hand, pull down the arm, get that little bend. And I'm just keeping this clipped in there because I like that. And down, and and that is it. it. Does not take much to transform Megatronus, but I just love that transformation. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> I really like how the arms don't even hide; they just fold up and become like the arms and the shoulders become almost the entire cannon. And moving him back a little bit. There we've got the Toys R Us version of Megatronus in robot mode, and I really, really like this. Here definitely works better, I think, because you get a little bit more color in the chest and the head there that's revealed, as well as the uh, knee bits. And then everything else is pretty much the same color that you get in tank mode, but it's broken up a lot better. I think because of the fact that the arms split and go off to the sides, you still got that like light gray, dark gray, light gray pattern going on, but like it's not an enormous chunk in the center. It's now two smaller sections on the sides. And the legs are broken up nicely with the silver and the metallic purple, which is echoed in what is now the sleeves, or cuffs rather. And you might notice he is missing his AR code or whatever the heck it is, that little poker chip looking thing that's supposed to go right there. That's because the other day I peeled it off because those things are ugly and I hate them and I've got some repro labels coming that'll replace them anyway. So just imagine a white sticker with a purple Decepticon logo in there and that's what that would look like. I do think that the white in there kind of broke up the chest a little bit better color wise, but I still hated it. So for now, this is fine. But yeah, I really, really like this. This is a very cool figure, which, like I said, has simple engineering, but it gets the job done remarkably well. Got a nice silhouette, nice proportions. The legs are much bulkier than anything else, which is a bit of a standout. Like, just from the knee down is, like, enormous compared to the rest of his body, <laughs> but it's okay. Doesn't bother me too much. And it's not that uncommon for uh, Transformers or other robot designs to have large legs. And he's got the scalpel spear halberd thing attached to his arm, which is where I prefer to keep it. I think it's meant to be unclipped and held in his hand, which is kind of 
it's okay, but I, I just think it better clipped up there. Though I do like the fact that because of the way he transforms, you can bend his hand down so you can have like that semi-relaxed stance, which I always enjoy. I said this with the uh, Centurion, the Hearts of Steel Bumblebee figure, where I just always like it when you've got figures that have melee weapons that can angle their hands down like that. That looks really cool. Though I do still prefer having the blade on his arm as opposed to being held. Now, this is pretty much the reason why I wanted to get the Toys R Us version as opposed to the other version. And it's also why I was glad that they had the Toys R Us version at the Toy Vault when I went looking for stuff. Because this is the mask closed version of the head. As far as I understand it, the other version of Megatronus is the exact same figure, except the visor is up and you can actually see his face. I know there are people that prefer the one where you can see Megatron's face, or Megatronus's face. I am not one of those people. I actually really, really like this. This has totally got a knight slash gladiator vibe, which I think really works for what little I'm familiar with of uh, Megatronus. As you know, he's a gladiator, so it makes sense. And I just really like this. I like this design a lot. It's very simple, but it looks really cool. And I like the uh, four glowing slits for the eyes. Very cool. All right, now before wrapping this up, let's move Megatronus off to the side there for size comparisons. And here you can see he is roughly the same size as a uh, current Power of the Primes Deluxe. Just a tiny bit shorter at the head. Granted, you know, got a nose cone sticking up behind his head there, but uh, just going from the top of the head, it's uh, pretty darn close. In other words, the Warrior Class R.I.D. figure is Warrior Class. What do you know? But anyway, yeah, that is R.I.D. Megatronus. Kind of wanted to get this out of the way for a couple of reasons, because I've got the stickers coming, so I wanted to make sure I had this done first. And also because, as simple as this figure is, I actually really, really like it. Like, this is a bring-to-work-and-mess-around-with-it-just-for-fun kind of toy. You know, I'm going to echo everyone else and say that if you have the opportunity to get a hold of this guy for a good price, definitely take it, because very, very cool figure. But that is going to do it for what I think about Robots in Disguise Megatronus, the Toys R Us version because of the faceplate there. What do you all think of Megatronus here? I know R.I.D. has plenty of detractors, but I feel like even people who hate on the line have to admit that some of the figures that came out of it are actually pretty good. Whether or not they're to your taste is another matter entirely, but I don't really think there's much in the way of arguing that this guy is actually pretty cool in terms of his engineering and stuff. And just out of curiosity, for anyone who either has this figure or has been wanting to get Megatronus, which do you prefer? Closed faceplate or open faceplate? Because you know where I stand. Whatever your thoughts, feel free to comment down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And while you're at it, also feel free to like or subscribe. Any of those would make me a happy rob. And remember, art is more than meets the eye.